This new threat cannot be detected by radar, was not caused by catastrophe, and is not created by man. Rather, a small insect known as Phragmites scale is infesting thousands of acres of rosocane, the dominant vegetation in the Mississippi River Delta. Back in the fall of 2016, Mr. Earl Armstrong and uh, Trevor Victoriano, one of our technician supervisors that work in the field, started noticing cane dying off in, in, in rapid numbers, rapid amounts over vast areas. And they kind of brought it to our attention and said, hey, you need to get down there. We need to take a look at this. We got a serious issue. So we got down there. We started investigating it. We knew we had a problem, but we couldn't identify what the problem is. They found an insect. They found something on the cane, but it was to identify it. We've identified that problem, and we're working with LSU uh, to, to monitor the program, monitor the scale, its development, its spread, and to find solutions. The Phragmite scale, more commonly known as Rosocane mealybug, is believed to originate from China and Japan, an area of the world where Roso is harvested for use in many industrial and agricultural applications. But here along our coast, the Roso cane is an integral part of keeping the Louisiana coast intact. Unlike some marsh vegetation, Roso cane is one of the most erosion resistant marsh plants. It assists in building land by trapping Mississippi River sediment. It serves as habitat for birds and fish. It can grow in salt and freshwater environments, and it serves as the first main buffer for our inland communities from tropical storm surges. I mean, so this is uh, certainly a, a new uh, threat to coastal restoration and coastal protection, something we've got to keep a close eye on and something that we're certainly very interested in supporting, uh, getting to the answers that we need to ensure that we can uh, get ahead of this, hopefully, um, and uh, stem the tide if indeed it is the issue that's affecting the cane now. It's a potential to be a, a really big deal on, on a number of fronts, both on the restoration and protection side in terms of our coastal wetlands, coastal ecology, but also from an agricultural standpoint. Rosso cane also provides much protection to coastal marsh oil platforms and pipelines. Rosso cane is a vegetation that's very hardy, very robust, and it really helps slow down coastal erosion. Because it's so woody and has a nice root base, it protects the marsh. And a lot of these marshes are around this oil and gas infrastructure, such as pipelines and wells and platforms. And these platforms and wells in the marsh are designed be built in wetlands and protected by rosocane. So as we lose that rosocane, when we lose it, all that infrastructure is going to be exposed to the Gulf and to wave energies of the Gulf. But in recent years, an obvious problem is occurring in the growth of rosocane and is believed to be due to the manifestation of the rosocane mealybug. The most evident area of impact is in the lower Plaquemines Parish area near the mouth of the Mississippi River, where in less than a year, believe that over 100,000 acres of Rosso has been affected by the scale. Biologists are alarmed at the severity of the scale's impact and are working to find ways to stop its spread. We're on the Delta National Wildlife Refuge, which is north of the, the State Wildlife Management Area of Pasaluke. Um, we're, in a, we're in a small, probably five, six acre, which once was two years ago at this time, a healthy thick stand of Rosso cane, which is now Starting to revert to open water, you have very sparse vegetation with rosocane. We're getting some Sagittaria, which is bull tongue or delta duck potato growing in. Um, we suspect that the scale is, is probably the, the main driver to pushing, setting this area back. Here we have this scale. It's native from China, uh, have it seen also in Japan. And here we just found it in Plaquemines Parish. So what you can see here is will be a large female. As you can see, measures almost half an inch and is actually uh, a mature female. This, as, as you start going up, you have more infestation. So what we notice it happens is here, these females will start producing eggs and then the nymphs, the babies, will start crawling and moving to the next segment of the stem and colonizing it. And then it keeps moving uh, to the upper parts of the plant. So by the end of the growing season, think about uh, October or November, you have all these uh, scales covering this plant. So that may be one of the factors why this plant is dying. Over time, these scales will be depleting the energy of Rosso. The Rosso cane mealybug is a very new threat to our coast, which brings a lot of questions on how it can be controlled and eliminated.
what we're trying to do, we have a plan to, is definitely a plan that is, work, work, is going to work in phases. So the phase one is to understand uh, right now what is the distribution of the scale, um, what is the impact that is having in different locations, but at the same time we want to understand whether we can use different varieties of Rosso as a potential restoration. Something really interesting that occurs in Plaquemis Parish is that there are four varieties of Rosso present in this area and maybe they have some variation in the level of resistance. Since the discovery of the Rosso cane mealybug in Lower Plaquemines Parish, it's evident that the scale is spreading through other areas of the state's coast. Some of the most recent developments has led the Louisiana Department of Agriculture and Forestry to deem coastal areas as quarantined and urge that Rosso cane not be moved out of those areas. But it moved very, very quickly. And of course, we're trying to contain it uh, from moving uh, any further north. There are some parishes that are not infected yet, and we need to contain it because one, the cost of eradication is going to be quite high regardless of the method. And when you start looking at the biology of the bug in, in China, they burn. They just burn, you know, burn the marshes off. Well, that's not an option for us. In a proactive effort to prevent further spread of the scale west of the Mississippi River, Congress recently allotted nearly $500,000 in grants to Louisiana, money that is dedicated to Rosso Cane research in Terrebonne and Lafourche parishes. A lot of the things that, that threaten the system, this coastal marshes down here are, are beyond individual control, but this is one issue where we as, as individual duck hunters and recreationists in general can play an important role. And the key message that duck, Ducks Unlimited and a lot of the other folks here would want to send to, to people using this marsh, especially duck hunters, is, is don't move the Rozo. Uh, and you can look at it and, and you, you may think it's healthy and not infected, but uh, but, but beneath the, the leaves, that the, this invasive pest may actually be there. So any movement of Rozo out of this area or even from one area to the other in this locale uh, is, is potentially bad news for the, for the larger system. So the key message is don't move the Rozo we know. As our state's biologists work to combat this rapid spreading threat, there are ways that we can help assist in stopping the spread of the Rosso cane mealybug. First, here is how you identify areas that have been affected. Next, make sure you take precautions to stop the spread of the scale by thoroughly washing your boat before you travel away from marinas and make sure not to move cane from one area to another. So the role of the public at this point is really try very hard not to spread this stuff. There, um, we, we were asking boaters to wash down their boats at the marinas before they leave in order to keep from spreading it. That's the biggest thing the public can do. We have a lot of questions we can't answer at this time and we're learning as fast as we can how to combat this. But right now, to be aware of what's going on and just really help us in not spreading this bug. If you believe there are areas near you that may have been affected by the Rosso cane mealybug, it's important that you contact the LSU Ag Center or Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. Together, we can ensure that our state's coast thrives for future generations.